how do we get more blacks in the foreign service and how, how do we make sure that the foreign service treats minority officers equally as well as they treat white officers, for example. And by and by, uh, I became director general and sure enough, our contacts with uh, the Black Caucus on the, on the Hill, for example, and the, the few blacks in the Foreign Service. We knew that then it constituted a little club. And here all of a sudden, I was Director General of the Foreign Service, something I never even thought would ever happen during those days. And uh, we met and we talked about things that I could do as a, as a a black person as director general. We all agreed uh, unanimously, I think, that one thing that I could do would be to try to change the culture of the Foreign Service in terms of bringing in minorities. Mm -hmm. And the other was to try and develop a methodology of administration regarding all Foreign Service officers after all, we had some other things that were not so uh, pleasant in the Foreign Service, uh, where people were involved and discriminated against. It didn't make any difference whether their skin was white or black. So that had to change as well. So I concentrated on, on that, and I concentrated on bringing more blacks in the Foreign Service. And then somebody said, well, how do you do that? And uh, we can't just go out in the streets and, and bring in as many as we want because there's a law regarding how the Foreign Service is to uh, operate. But more importantly, how can we get money or get backing, monetary backing, for bringing younger black people in the Foreign Service who come from the universities? We concentrated on all the big universities. But there were a couple of us who went down to historically black colleges and universities. And all of a sudden I, I learned about this, this uh, treasure trove, I guess I would call it, called HBCUs. I made a list of all the things that I thought had to be changed. Mm -hmm. And then I went to see uh, Lawrence Eagleburger, who, who at that time was uh, the uh, Undersecretary for Management. Mm -hmm. He was a little bit more than that. He was Special Assistant to uh, Henry Kissinger. Mm -hmm. And then later on, uh, he, he became uh, Deputy Secretary of State. Right. But when I was Director General, he, he said, look, um, you have the mantle. You know what the law says. Um, I, I will back you, and so will the secretary. Mm -hmm. But you've got to do it yourself. Got it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was sort of my uh, entry into being director general. I see. Who were some of the others who worked with you at that time, and how did the Foreign Affairs Fellows Program actually get started? When we started a little Saturday morning, rendezvous in the uh, cafeteria. Gravely, myself and several others would meet on Saturdays. And then uh, try to bring us to a point where we, where we say, make a deal. It was uh, kind of difficult to get people to sign on to it. And you may ask, why not? Uh, well, first of all, this is, not, this is not de rigueur, not something you live with every day. Right. And sometimes people say, you know, why should I get involved in something that's going to fail or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the of small group of officers, uh, black officers, signed on. And then one day we got the idea that why don't we go and call on the black caucus in Congress. I must say that, uh, in retrospect, that's probably a crazy idea. Um, why are we going to the Black Caucus outside of the State Department? Somebody would say, what are you trying to do? Upset everything here? But uh, we went. Mm -hmm. 
And the Black Caucus had lunch with us on the hill. And we made presentations to them, told them what we were trying to do. And what we wanted was legislation that would permit us to give scholarships to minorities uh, and others. Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, the, what do you call it, the, the phrase and others was added on later at the, at the suggestion of uh, the governor of Virginia. He was the first black governor. Oh, yes. And uh, as, the, as director general, I had the habit of calling on as many governors around the country as I could to talk, tell them about the Foreign Service. Mm -hmm amazing what uh, people don't know about the Foreign Service. And I went down to see him and took one of my staff assistants with me, uh, a white woman who was from Virginia. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was also an eye, eye person I needed to tell me what was going on in the department. Mm -hmm. And when I said, I'm going to call on uh, the governor, she said, well, can I go and meet my governor? She lived in Virginia. Yes. <laughs> So we got to, uh, got to his office and I told him, I said, uh, I've got one of your constituents out who's uh, attending me today. Yes. He said, well, who, what's her, what's her name? I told him, bring him in. And then he switched to the, the syrupy southern draw. <laughs> <laughs> he said, lady, come on in here. Oh. One of my constituents. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I told him about what we were trying to do, and he said, look, um, by this time the caucus had put language in the appropriations bill mm -hmm. for, for the State Department, which said uh, scholarships will be uh, provided um, if the State Department puts forth a plan. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we're going to make this work to him, I said, and we kind of like to have uh, your, your support if you happen to come across somebody that would, uh, would be one of your constituents, mm -hmm. maybe a congressperson or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. I said, we've got the Black Caucus agenda up, I said, but they're not the only ones in, in the Congress. I said, I want white congressmen to also yes. support this. It's okay, you get you you got my vote and I'll talk it up. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember one thing. He said, Have you ever been to Appalachia? I said, No. He said, Well I want you to go. And you will find an area that's just as devastated and wanting as black communities in this country. Yes. So uh my aide and I went off to Appalachia, mm -hmm. and sure enough, it was a place that deserved yes. some attention. Mm -hmm. And he said, I, and I, I asked uh, the governor, I said, well, how do we do this? We can't just go back and redo this uh, legislation. He said, just add, and others. And others. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> he came up with that little statement, and others. Well, um, we had to develop a, an implementation program, mm -hmm. tell how we were going to implement this legislation. Mm -hmm. And we had to write that process down. And there was no place in the State Department that we could do that without someone uh, tipping over the ice bucket. Mm -hmm. On Saturday morning, we did all the clerical work at Graver's house on Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. And then, we bring it back in, and uh, as Director General, I would uh, give it to someone in personnel, and and uh, even with some grumbling, we would get it into our appropriation request, mm -hmm. and then get it up to uh, to uh, the M, and also to uh, the Deputy Secretary mm -hmm. of State, and then over to the Congress. Finally, we realized that we could get, we could uh, provide these uh, scholarships. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that people don't get 
sandbagged. And, and I realized that the Department of State was a really hostile territory in terms of, of this. And uh, I said to John and a couple of people working with me, I said, the one thing we have to make sure, we have to be truthful. Yes. Because uh, we don't have, this is hostile territory. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea of how do you administer a program like that without people killing it, uh, well, or sandbagging it, as the case may be. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who had the idea of uh, having it administered outside of the State Department. But we all agreed that if we could see out a way to get this program administered outside of the State Department, mm -hmm. for the State Department, it would have a, a better chance of success. I see. And thereby see. came the idea of uh, getting a contractor to run the program of finding uh, scholars mm -hmm. who could compete for the support that comes under this legislation, oh. which is used to fund, uh, of course, to fund the Pickering Fellows and the Wrangell Fellows, and even now the uh, uh, pain, pain Fellows are under that as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I well remember when uh, we put this up for bid, and among the uh, the activities that bid on it was Woodrow Wilson, mm -hmm. Hope, and uh, the Woodrow Wilson Foundation took over this program as the first first uh, contractor mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, at least fifty percent of the success of this program or more. Was, it was due to the Woodrow Wilson Foundation and, and the commitment of uh, not just Hope himself, but the people who were working there mm -hmm. 